It's the largest project in length over this type of soils. We're basically floating right over top of this wetland that we're going through. You gotta take a lot of care and, and pride in what you're doing so that you're not damaging the muskeg. You're taking advantage of mother nature's natural growth and then from there you're trying to protect it. Bicar Wabasca has the worst ground known to Alberta realistically. There's no telling what you're gonna get into. The muskeg is, it's the deepest site I've ever been in. There are conventional roads being constructed that it has been going on for so long time. So what we thrive on is like we want to say, okay, those methods are good. They were working, but we have a better method. Obviously, we want to prove to them that this technology and, and this type of construction is the answer. There's been lots of talk of this for the last three, four years. We want to show them this road is everything we're promising you and here it is. What we do is we create access in areas that are somewhat inaccessible or very difficult to access. At Paradox, we pride ourselves in always uh, looking for the best, most innovative solution to solve the problem. We want to construct a sustainable road. Sustainability comes with cost, the economics, the benefit to the society, and the environment. One thing that actually attracted uh, me to Paradox was the fact that we have a technology here that reduces our environmental footprint as opposed to other conventional methods uh, of road building or in my background mining where we would actually remove quite a bit of geology and lithology to get to those uh, sub-base structures. We start with geotextile, lay geotextile down on the native soil uh, to give that separation. Then we install our tough cell and then we start to bring in aggregates. So the base layer would be sand, another layer of geotextile over the sand, and another layer of tough cell, and then we would bring in 40 millimeter gravel. And that would be the finished driving surface. If you ever wanted to remove the road, basically you would just do the process in reverse and you know, you would, you would bring it back to its natural state. The project that we're getting into is an 11 kilometer access road uh, constructed over muskegy, saturated soil conditions. The road is being used to access a natural gas compressor station. For years and years and years, there's been a, there's been a site there operating and they have not been able to drive into it. go fly in and fly out. Um, and then in the winter, they have to use an ice road. Well, it's, it's an opportunity to showcase what uh, Paradox has been working on for the last 14 years. I am most excited just to, to get to work, to, to have our team pull together and execute something of this magnitude. It's more just like, uh, it's like a connection between us and the spirit world with the uh, Creator. We do it to also to get the blessing to, to use the land. The caribou migration period has ended and the teams can begin building. So we're going to be working 24-7. We're going to be keeping everybody on site for the duration. But yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna have to push, and we've got you know a sizable crew. We're gonna have a lot of equipment on site. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough, but you know I think we're up for the challenge. It's early summer, and nearly 100 laborers, operators, and managers begin arriving into the remote location of northern Alberta. Starting at kilometer zero. It's going to require everyone working in perfect synchronicity to get this road finished. 
Paradox knows their technology is the only way through. The trucks will haul in over 300,000 tons of local sand and aggregate to fill the tough cells. By utilizing local materials and requiring less material to fill the cells, carbon emissions are reduced by 40% on tough cell builds. Sections are joined together to create the continuous webbing of tough cell. 200,000 square meters will be joined in all. It is a novel polymeric alloy, and it, to me, I say it in layman's term, it's a nylon on steroids, tested from minus 60 to plus 60 degrees Celsius, stays stable, it's inert. I haven't found anything that's close to it yet. Our approach, that's why, was to minimize the field material, minimize the damage to the environment. That's why it is the best method available to construct a road like this, best in every sense. Working 24 hours a day, the teams are making great progress just as planned. Laying an average of 250 meters per day, their goal is getting closer. You know, we had a uh, really good feeling about how things were going to go uh, based on our design, based on our, our execution plan. And then, unfortunately, Mother Nature took a turn for the worse and it started to rain and it uh, pretty much hasn't quit. You know, we've had almost max rainfall as far back as they've been tracking. You know, we've been struggling to get three consecutive days of good weather out here. We've got a lot of surface water and the muskeg areas are just completely saturated. We had guys out there chest deep in, in this stuff. So you can see pretty quickly how that would change your ability to work. <laughs> Going from ankle deep to chest deep. So, you know, our entire crew was wearing PFDs and, and yeah, they were just struggling. Basically, the, uh, the planned equipment wasn't able to access those areas, so now we had to do it all by hand. It was just one of those things that all these things work together to create a huge, huge problem with productivity. Without being able to get the equipment out front and, and adequately light the area to work safely and efficiently, it wasn't, it wasn't a good idea to keep running the night crews. The night crews were halted, and the progress slowed. I've worked up there for years and years and years, and you can't predict what you're going to get into. They didn't expect the muskeg to be as deep as it was. They had to resort to matting, because they needed to have a structured matted road to be able to get ahead of themselves to lay the geotextile down. Bringing in access mats to lay down beside the main road would allow them to work steadily through the nearly impossible conditions. They caught up to the front of it, you'd start pulling from the back and just keep leapfrogging in front of you. Now that we've got um, this, this workspace approved and we've got those mats there, now we can bring in uh, lighting to light up the entire work area and give them safe working conditions. With the mats installed, the crew passed the 6.5 kilometer mark. The muskeg depth got much shallower and they were back on track.
And then all of a sudden one night, it went overnight, it went cold, like really cold. You know, everything froze solid. As the seasons change, the challenges don't stop. They just, they just change along with it. The winter frost set in just as they were getting close to the finish. The team pushed through and finished the last section right before the ground froze over completely. And I just heard over the radio our, our uh, dozer operator saying, yeah, I think that's the last load I need here. Yesterday we laid the last load of gravel on this job and it was pretty exciting. We were all joking how we should go hug out on the road and have a kumbaya moment. The road's there. Our client is able to get to that compressor site now and build the facility that they need to service ultimately their customers. At all times, we were we reevaluating, were reassessing, and replanning whatever whatever we could. There was really one common theme that I always told these guys is this is your signature and in the end uh, success is, is what I know you guys want as a signature. Stick in there. We are not giving up on this. Without our labors, this wasn't possible because not everybody can do it. I can't give enough credit to the people, especially our labor crew, that, that built this road. The road is looking fantastic. It's exceeded our expectations far beyond. The client even says it's too good of a road that guys are going too fast on it now. I like a client that pushes us to be our best, and they've done that. Um, but never in a way where we felt undue pressure or anything like that. You know, they recognize all those challenges and they've, they've expressed their appreciation for what Paradox has put in to, to achieve this. Obviously the way we're doing things is setting us apart. We're looking outside the box and not just tackling it from a conventional standpoint. You know, if you are looking for a better future, better roads, better paths, better load supports, and especially ground improvement and soil stabilization. It is very promising. We don't need to take every project and, and fly through it. It's taking on a project and leaving our name stamped on that road and know that it's going to last. <laughs>